Hi there, welcome to this series of collections in C Sharp. In this series, today we are going to learn about one more collection which is Q. Let's start. Let's have a look what we are going to learn in this video. We will learn what is Q, how to declare and initialize a Q, how to get, add, remove values from the Q. We will create a demo of all these functionalities and we will learn everything in detail. The important question when should we use this collection when should we use q that is also very important so we will learn that part in this video and lots of other things you are going to learn in this video so i recommend you to watch this complete video and at the end of this video you will be able to work with q collection let's see what is q q is a type of collection which is available in system dot collections namespace so basically this collection class is available in system.collections namespace and if you are going to work with this class you have to include this namespace in your project. Q is a FIFO type of collection. FIFO means first in first out. So this is the special type of collection which works in this order first in first out. Now what is this first in and first out? Let's understand this in detail. To understand first in first out. I am going to tell you an example. We will learn how this thing works in the real life. Here is a ticket counter and people can come and get the ticket from here. So what happens suppose first person came here to buy the ticket and he will be standing in the line. Now immediately one more person came to buy the ticket. What will happen? Suppose a girl came to buy a ticket. So he will be in the queue. He will be the next person in the queue in the line. So suppose the ticket counter is still not working. So what will happen? People will come and will stand behind the other person. Similarly, one more person came and he will join the queue. Now what will happen? One more person came and he will be the fourth person in the line. Now the ticket counter start giving the tickets. The first person got the ticket. He will take the ticket and he will go away. Now there are only three people in the line. So what will happen? Who will get the next ticket? The lady who came at the second time. Now in the line C is the first person. So C will get the ticket. But immediately before getting the ticket, one more person came and joins the line. So everyone who is coming to get the ticket, he will enter from the last end. And if someone is getting the ticket, then he will get the ticket from the first end. So basically, if you think about it in a collection way, there are two ends. One end is where people can add people can join and the second end is where we can remove the people or people can go away from there so ultimately this is a fixed order people will come and they will join at the last and if someone got the ticket then they will go away from the another end similarly one more lady came and she joins the queue in the last one now the first lady got the ticket she went away and similarly things will go. So if you will understand, it is the order first in first out. Whoever is coming first will be the person to get out from there. Now let's understand about the queue. Elements in queue are added from one end and are removed from the other end. Just like the previous example, in the queue collection, we will add elements from only one end and we will remove the elements from the another end. Q is one dimensional type of collection. So basically there is only one dimension. There is no 2D or 3D. There is only one dimensional. We can only have a simple normal queue. To work with the queue, we have to use queue class. So basically whenever we have to work with a collection, we have to provide the type and the type depends on the collection. So in order to work with the queue collection, we have to use queue class. This queue class is available under system.collections namespace. So that we have already learned in the previous slide. Q elements are of object type. It means we can insert any type of element in the queue. But the main mechanism is the element which will come first will be the element to get out from the queue. Let's learn how to declare and initialize a queue. To declare a queue, we have to provide the type. The type is Q and we have to give a name. So we have to write Q and the name of your type. You can write any meaningful name and the semicolon. That's it. That's how you can declare an Q in the shisha. 
now it's time to initialize the queue to initialize a queue we have to use new keyword new and the constructor of this queue class we have to call that one so queue and the constructor there are multiple overrides of this constructor we can use any one of them based on our requirement uh, the simple one is parameterless so to initialize a queue we have to use either parameterless or the other overridden versions of this queue constructor now let's understand about few methods of this queue class which are required to work with the queue collection first one is nq nq method is used to add a new element at the last of the queue if there is no element in the queue then that will obviously that will be the first element if we have to add another element then we will use the nq method and that will be the second element of the queue dq dq method is used to get the first element from the queue suppose you have a queue which has five elements one two three four five if you will apply dq method then you will get the first element what is the first element which was inserted first time so suppose first was one if you will apply dq for the first time then you will get one now one is removed from the queue there are only four elements two three four five now if you will apply the dq method the first element is two so you will get two as a output similarly if you will again apply the dq method then there are only three elements three four five and which one is the first three is the first so you will get the three peak method peak method is used to get the details of that element which will be out from the queue if we apply dq method let's create a demo of all these things and let's see how things works in the practical way here i am on my console screen and using the dotnet cli i'm going to create a new application and all these logics we are learning about the collections are applicable to each type of applications which we are going to build in c sharp this is irrespective of the type of application you, you can use these logics in console in web in mobile or any type of applications which is going to build in the c sharp language let's open it in the visual studio code so here we are in the visual studio code editor and now i'm going to open the program.cs class in the program.cs class you have to include a namespace system.collections how using system dot collections this is the namespace which we are going to use because ultimately we have to work with the queue class and that queue class belongs to the system dot collection namespace now let's declare a queue to declare a queue we have to use queue class and you have to give it a meaningful name so suppose my queue that's it that's how you can declare it in the c sharp program if you need to initialize it you can simply initialize it by using my queue equal to new and queue there are basically multiple override version of this queue constructor here you can see this is the first parameter less second you have to pass a collection it will work there also third we can use the capacity property and fourth we can pass the capacity and the grow factor for this queue class so suppose for the first time i'm using the parameter less constructor and by using this we can initialize our queue you can initialize it in the same line where you have declared it so suppose if you want to initialize it right here you can do that also simply queue name equal to new queue and the parameter less constructor or any other constructor which is available in the queue class that's it now if you need to add any element in the queue before that let's see what is available in the queue class if you do not have any element to it let's press f5 and see all the elements all the details of this my queue so if i hover my mouse over here you can see the count is zero and there is nothing in the queue class the count is zero is synchronized is false these are the properties and and these are the default values assigned to those properties now let's add few elements to this queue and we have learned to add a new element in the queue we have to use nq method iq dot nq and the type of nq you can see in the intelligence it expect a object type parameter so basically we can pass anything over here so suppose i'm writing here first person okay 
Now let's press F5 and see what is available in the MyQ. MyQ has one element and at the zero, zero position, this is the first position, the type is object and the value is first person. Okay, let's add a few more elements to it. And then I'm going to add any other type. So suppose I'm going to enter one. Okay, now let's see all the elements in the intelligence. Here you can see we have all three elements. Now what will happen if I need to fetch the elements from this queue? So suppose I'm going to fetch an element. And to get an element from the queue, we have to use DQ method. DQ. And you can see that DQ does not expect any kind of parameter. So basically simply we have to use DQ method and that's it. Let's press F5. Here you can see the first value from the queue is available in the element. Now what will happen if I apply this method 2-3 times? Like this. Okay, let's press F5 now. Okay, so here at the first element, there are three elements in the queue. So the first element will be first person. So in the element variable, there is first person. Now because we have removed first element from the queue, so basically there are only two elements now. And if we apply again DQ method, then we will get the second value. So second person is available over here. And now if we see how many elements are available, there is only one element in the queue because we have removed first two elements from the queue. So at the third line, there is only one element. So that is the next element which is going to be used for the DQ method, which is one. So that's why in the element two, we have, now let's try some other constructor also. So basically in the second constructor, we have to pass a collection. And to pass a collection, suppose I'm going to create a new array. And as a constructor, I can pass this array directly to this queue. So what will happen? Let's put a breakpoint over here and let's see what are the changes while we declare and initialize a new queue when we pass an array to its constructor. So at this time, my queue has five elements and all these elements are coming from the array. But here you can see the type of the elements is object. But in the array, the type was integer. So we can say that the queue stores all the values in form of object. Whether you are passing integer character or any other type, ultimately those types will be converted to the object and queue will store its element in the form of object. So here uh, we will get the one because one is the first element. If we see all the elements in the queue, then you can see that we have for because first three elements are removed from the queue that's why you can see the changes let me run this application again so now you can see there are eight elements these first five elements are coming from the array and these three elements we have inserted manually so at this position at this line there are eight elements if i press f10 one value is removed from the queue first one that is removed and that is available in the element now if i press f10 again then one more value from the queue is removed which was 2 and the 2 is available in the element 2 now the next element which is going to be removed is 3 so if i press f10 again you will see 3 is available in the element 2 how to use the peak method peak method is basically used to get which element is going to be the next element if we use the dq method Let's try it over here where suppose I'm writing p1 and my q dot peak. Okay, let's press F5. So in the p1 you will see there is well there is value 1. So it means 1 is going to be removed from the q if we are going to apply dq method. So we have applied dq method and 1 is removed from the q. Similarly, if we apply this peak method again. Here you can see one is the value which is going to be removed let's press f10 and uh, again now you will see that two is going to be removed from the my queue because two is at the first position let's press f10 two will be removed 
okay now the next element is 3 which is at the first position and now let's press f10 in the p3 you will see 3 is the value so basically we can say that the peak method is used to get the first element which is going to be removed or simply the element which is at the first position or at the zeroth index at the queue when should we use queue collection Q is a non-generic type of collection so all the collections which we are learning in this series are non-generic type and if you need to work with non-generic then you can use Q class when you have to use data in FIFO format so first in first out where you have this type of requirement then obviously you have to use Q class and we don't know element type so if you don't know the element type because you can store elements of other type all the type of elements you can store in the queue if you have to work with the same type of data then I recommend you to use generic queue suppose you already know that there are going to be only integer values in the queue or string values or any other type if your type is fixed then I recommend you you must use generic collection that is much first as compared to these non generic collections but if you are already working in an application or already the development is going on then if you need to learn about the queue then you can use this class in your project but for the new development or new project I do not recommend you to use this type of non generic collection I recommend you to use generic collections and generic collections you will be learning in next tutorial that is all in this part like the video tell me your feedback in the comment section share the video subscribe to the channel thank you for watching have a great day